Welcome back to the ECG course. This is chapter 10. In this chapter, we're going to start talking about ventricular rhythms. Ventricular rhythms are not a desirable type of rhythm to be in because they're originating in exactly the opposite direction that they, you know, you would want your heart to originate in. Your physiological pacemaker is typically the SA node, way up here. And we've talked about different possibilities, you know, in the atria and in the AV junction. And now we're talking about within the ventricles themselves, you know, something like along the lines of a Purkinje fiber or somewhere, uh, a ventricular cell takes over as pacemaker. And we have, you know, a ventricular escape rhythm or a ventricular reentry. And this is not a desirable rhythm to be in because with a ventricular rhythm, they can become very fast. So because of them being very fast, you won't have a whole lot of stroke volume. Also, your stroke volume will be depleted because you're losing that synchronization between the atria and the ventricles, where the atria can fully contract and eject all of its blood into the ventricles, and then the ventricles can contract and send that blood out to the lungs and body. You don't have that in a very effective manner with a ventricular arrhythmia. So the first arrhythmia we're going to talk about is the idioventricular rhythm, idioventricular. And when you hear idioventricular, you should just think that it's within the normal intrinsic rates of the ventricles. So sometimes these will be called a ventricular escape rhythm, okay? And the intrinsic rate of the ventricles is about 20 to 40 times per minute, all right, which is pretty darn slow, not that uh, conducive with long sustaining life. The rhythm should be regular, okay? So your R to R interval, just like you know, many of the other rhythms we've talked about so far, your R to R interval should be regular, okay? And you won't see a P wave before the QRS complex with a normal PR interval, all right? You, with ventricular arrhythmias, you may see P waves, but there's no marriage there. There's no, nothing that says that the P wave is causing the QRS complex, so they're kind of divorced. And with the idioventricular rhythm, you probably won't see a P wave at all. You know, for the most part, you just see a idioventricular escape rhythm, which is a wide QRS complex. It's going to be greater than three small boxes wide. This is the first arrhythmia we've said can do that. And it's going to, and that's by nature, all right? Because with the ventricular rhythm, you're depolarizing outside of the normal conduction system. So remember I said before that this is the highway. This is the fast road, okay, taking this conduction system. But with the idioventricular rhythm, or with any type of ventricular rhythm, you're going outside the highway. You're taking the back roads, and you're going from cell to cell to cell to cell to cell, and that's much slower than taking the normal conduction system. Okay, so you'll have a wide QRS complex. All right, and you should always be able to identify the T wave. So this is the QRS complex here. Let me use a different color. This is the QRS complex right here. And then you have your T wave right here. All right, you have an inverted T wave. And that's typical that the T wave will go in the opposite direction of the QRS complex with the ventricular rhythm. All right, our next rhythm is accelerated ventricular rhythm. And just like we talked about junctional escape and then we talked about accelerated junctional, well, an accelerated ventricular rhythm is anything from 40 to 100 beats per minute. So we said an junctional escape rhythm or an idioventricular will be 20 to 400 beats per minute. Then your accelerated junctional is 40 to 100. And you should be able to guess by now what greater than 100 will be, but we're going to cover that in a second. Um, so again, for your accelerated ventricular rhythm, it's going to be 40 to 100 beats per minute. Your rhythm should be very regular. Your P wave will be non-existent, so you don't have a PQRS ratio, you don't have a PR interval, and your QRS width needs to be wide for it to be a ventricular rhythm. Now I will say, I'm going to caution you before it's too late, that a ventricular rhythm is not the only thing that causes the QRS complex to be wide. Remember we're talking about time here, so there's other things okay, that can cause time to slow down as far as uh, taking longer to cause ventricular depolarization. We'll talk about that later on, but this is the first cause. Uh, you need to think this first when you see a wide complex. It's probably ventricular.
okay, until you can prove otherwise. All right, the next one, greater than 100 beats per minute. You guessed it, ventricular tachycardia. And you may have heard of this one before. Um, much, much more common than the last one, the accelerated ventricular. And deadly. This is a deadly rhythm. Um, the patient may be stable, though. So there's different types of treatment depending on the patient's condition. The rhythm itself is not a sustainable rhythm. It, it is uh, probably caused by serious myocardial injury okay, and, and will require treatment at some point. So the rate greater than 100 beats per minute, the rhythm is regular. The P wave, you might not see any P wave, which is the most common that you won't see any P wave, but sometimes you do, and that's what these little arrows are pointing to on this strip. Sometimes you do see them, but they're buried in, in this, uh, this fashion that has nothing to do with staying consistent. Those P waves, now if you measure the P waves, they will march out amongst each other. So that's what these dots are doing. These dots are showing you where the P waves are. And from P wave to P wave, that will stay consistent. But you'll notice that they have nothing to do with the underlying ventricular rhythm. We call that complete AV disassociation or atrioventricular disassociation, meaning that the atria are depolarizing and the ventricles are depolarizing, but they're not in sync. They're not doing it in any kind of organized fashion. All right, again, the QRS complex must be wide for it to be ventricular tachycardia. So it'll be greater than 120 milliseconds, which is 0.12 seconds, which is three small boxes, because every small box, remember, is 0 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds. All right. Now, so far we talked about this type of ventricular tachycardia. Now this is called monomorphic. Now monomorphic means it has one mono morphology, morphic. All right, so it's monomorphic. Okay, it does not change shapes. It, the QRS complex, for the most part, is not changing shapes. Now you'll see those little notches, that's from the P wave, but the, all of these QRS complexes is, looks the same. And, and the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, the next type, it changes shape. If you look at those QRS complexes, again, you have now an irregular arrhythmia, where before you had a regular rhythm, okay? And everything else, is the same as VTAC. For it to be polymorphic VTAC, it just needs to change shape, needs to change morphology, and it will become an irregular rhythm. All right, it's still a wide complex tachycardia, and that's how we group these wide complex tachycardia. Okay, so remember that it doesn't have to be regular to be VTAC, but if it becomes irregular, it's called polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And then to be even more specific, torsades de points, or if you're speaking in French as uh, this was created as a French term, torsades de point. And torsades, sometimes you can just abbreviate it TDP. Torsades is a type of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, but it is treated completely differently. So it's important to consider this a completely different arrhythmia. Torsades will always have this bow tie, okay, this up and down, this bow tie configuration. If you think back to the name, torsades de point, that really translates to turning of the points, okay? And what's happening in the ventricles is you're, you're having these ventricular foci are kind of changing in this organized fashion. So you're having this bow tie effect. So the rhythm is irregular because of the, the bow tie, you know, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. It's a wide complex, but it is this bow tie fashion that's called torsades de point. And this is treated with magnesium sulfate, okay? And the reason that this is treated with magnesium sulfate and not with a, another type of ventricular dysrhythmic, like for this rhythm, uh, polymorphic VTAC, or for this one, monomorphic VTAC, you could treat with something like amiodarone or lidocaine, which those are types of ventricular uh, dysrhythmics. But with torsades, you can't use those because torsades is often caused by what we call an R on T phenomenon, and that occurs 
when one QRS complex lands on the T wave of the previous uh, ventricular depolarization, repolarization wave, and that's the refractory period that has been prolonged. Now I'm getting very confusing to you, I know, but basically torsades is caused by a long QT, a long pro refractory period, and amiodarone and lidocaine and other ventricular dysrhythmics cause longer QT intervals. They prolong the refractory period. So the cause of torsades can be even worse if you give those different dysrhythmics. That's why we treat torsades with mag sulfate. I will review that again in, in a better fashion uh, later on when I'm talking about treatments, but I just wanted to kind of give you some intuition for now. Ventricular fibrillation, all right, ventricular fibrillation is not sustainable with life, will not create a pulse, and is literally just the ventricles quivering. It's not ejecting blood in any effective manner. It's very similar to atrial fibrillation, but now the ventricles are depolarizing 600 to 800 times per minute, and it is not sustainable with life, and it must be treated. And, you know, you're going to initiate CPR and provide defibrillation and, and all of that good stuff. And it could look many different ways. This is, you know, a, a coarse type of V-fib where it's easy to see the squiggly line. You could have fine V-fib where it's hard to see the squiggly line. There's no QRS complex identifiable, no P wave. It just looks almost just like artifact. All right, let's just review these real quick. Um, looking at this EKG strip, we have a wide QRS complex. It's very regular. Okay, it's very regular if I just measure from one to the next. All right, the rate, if we're looking at the rate, we have a rate of, let's count them out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 160 beats per minute. And remember I told you if you use that big box rule, it would have been quicker. Here, let me use this color. If we measure from this QRS complex to this QRS complex, you could see it's almost, you know, two big boxes in between those, which would be at about 150 beats per minute. So we could have just guessed 150, and we'd be pretty dang accurate. All right, so it's faster than 100 beats per minute. It's a wide complex. We said that it's very regular, okay? And we don't really see any P waves anywhere. This is monomorphic VTAC, monomorphic VTAC. Looking at the next one, well, this looks very slow. We have two beats on there. We can see that right off the bat. It is a six second strip, so we could say this is about 20 beats per minute. It's a wide QRS complex. We really can't identify that it's regular, okay, because we only have two to work with. But what we could say is that it's a wide QRS complex. We don't see any P waves, and it's 20 beats per minute. That fits the rules for idioventricular rhythm. You would want to print out a longer strip or monitor for a longer period of time to see if it, it does fit all the other rules for idioventricular rhythm. All right, here we have another one. This one looks to be about one, two, three, four, five, it's six beats per minute. So it's just at that 60 to, it's within that 60 to 100 mark. It is a wide QRS complex. It is regular, if we measure these out. Okay, it is regular. You can see that that QRS complex is greater than three small boxes wide. Hopefully you're able to identify that very easily. And remember that this is the QRS complex here. Let me use a different color. This is where the QRS complex starts. It ends right about there. And then that's your T wave after that. Okay. So those are two different waves. Um, and this fits all the rules for an accelerated ventricular rhythm. No P waves, wide QRS complex, the rates between 60 and 100 and it's very regular, so that's an accelerated ventricular rhythm. All right, the next one here, V-fib. Okay, we're not gonna get into any details. There's no QRS complexes there, no P waves there. It's a squiggly line, that's V-fib. All right, looking at our next one. Now this one, you might wanna say V-fib right off the bat, but these squiggly lines are a little bit, you know, more, they're bigger, so it's possible that they're QRS complexes. And if you look at it, it looks almost like it's starting small and it's getting bigger, then smaller, then bigger, then smaller. If it continues in that fashion, this is torsades the point, TDP, torsades the points. All right. <clears throat> so it's important to be able to identify that. Now, 
early V-fib, coarse V-fib, very early on V-fib, looks a lot like torsades. So you have to be sure that it's torsades. The, the good part is you can end up having to shock both of them depending on your patient's condition. Torsades often presents with seizure-like activity. A lot of times patients will posture from hypoxia. That often occurs with V-fib as well. But I'm getting too much into the treatment and uh, we're trying to do just recognition for right now. So we just want to identify the rhythms for, the, for now. All right, this arrhythmia, it's very fast. And let's just use the big box rule to quickly identify the rate. We have a QRS complex on the bold line here. The next bold line is here. That would be 300 beats per minute, but it's on this one right here, and that's 150 beats per minute. And the reason it's 150 beats per minute because it's two big boxes and 300 divided by two is 150. Remember that. All right, next thing to do is identify if it's regular. I'm gonna use that little R wave there to identify the regularity. And it looks like it is very regular there. Okay, next thing to do, look at it and see if it's wide or narrow. And yes, it is wide. Let me point out where the QRS complex starts right here. Remember, that, that first positive deflection is an R wave. Even though it's not a big R wave, that's still part of the QRS complex. And the QRS complex ends probably right around there. So it is greater than three small boxes wide. And then we have our T wave, of course, right here after that. This is an example of ventricular tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, and this is monomorphic because it does not change shapes and it is very regular, monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. Again, right off the bat, squiggly line, there's no organization, no P waves, no QRS complexes, this is V-fib. All right, looking at this again, this looks a lot like the, the one we saw before, and again, you have that bow tie fashion, bow tie fashion, so we gotta think towards sods to point. And that's it for now. Don't think that you've learned everything you need to learn about uh, ventricular rhythms or any of the other arrhythmias we've covered thus far. That was just the basic uh, introduction. I'm going to do many more videos that are going to go more into detail on the causes of these rhythms and show you many more different examples of these rhythms. Um, if you want to go back and you want to cover junctional rhythms, click chapter 9 on the left. If you're ready to move on to AV blocks, which is arguably the toughest part of identifying or interpreting EKGs, it will be AV blocks. Um, that's the next chapter, so click that image on the right. But before you go to that chapter, I uh, strongly recommend that you go back and watch the other videos a couple more times so you really got the other ones down because I'm gonna just kind of throw a wrench in, in the gears here with AV blocks and, and teach you some new stuff. All right, as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.